Let's look at some examples of how to analytically determine the stability of equilibria for discrete dynamical systems. For the first example, let's look at the simplest possible case, a linear dynamical system. Say one of the form y of t plus 1 is 0 0.6 times y sub t plus 2. The first step in determining the stability of an equilibrium is to find the equilibria. So we plug in the same number, let's say e, for all values of y, and then solve for e. So we'll subtract 0.6e from both sides to get 0.4e equals 2, which means e equals 2 divided by 0.4, or e equals 5. So there's our equilibrium. Now we want to check stability. To do this analytically, we need to write the dynamical system as y sub t plus 1 is some function f of y sub t. In this case, the updating function f of y is 0 0.6 times y plus 2. And then we need to calculate the derivative f prime f prime of y is just 0 0.6. It's constant since f is a linear function. We plug in the value of the equilibrium into the derivative, so we have f prime of e, which is 5. Well, in this case it doesn't matter. f prime is always 0 0.6. The absolute value of the derivative at the equilibrium 5 is then just 0 0.6, which is less than 1, which implies the equilibrium y sub t equals 5 is stable. Let's try another slightly more complicated example. In this case we'll make it nonlinear. Let's say z sub n plus 1 is 1 plus z sub n over 2 minus z sub n squared over 2. Let's find the equilibria. We'll use e again, so we'll have e equals 1 plus e over 2 minus e squared over 2. And we need to solve this for e. I'll subtract e from both sides. We can simplify the expression by multiplying through by 2. So we get 2 minus e minus e squared. Can we solve this equation? Well, we can factor it pretty easily. Or if you can't remember how to factor, you can use the quadratic formula. We can factor it as 2 plus e times 1 minus e. And so the equilibria are negative 2 and 1. Let's check their stability. Well, again, we need to write the dynamical system as z sub n plus 1 is some function, let's call it g this time, of z sub n. And g of z is 1 plus z over 2 minus z squared over 2, given the form of the dynamical system. We need to calculate its derivative, g prime of z. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of z over 2 is 1 half. And the derivative of negative z squared over 2 is negative z. Now we have to plug in the two different values of the equilibria separately and see what we get. So let's check e equals negative 2 first g prime of negative 2 is 1 half plus 2, which is 2 and a half, which means the absolute value of g prime of negative 2 is greater than 1. We can conclude that the equilibrium e equals negative 2 is unstable.
All right, let's try the other one, e equals one. g prime of one is one half minus one, which is negative one half. So the absolute value of the derivative at the equilibrium one is one half, which is less than one. So therefore, the equilibrium E equals one is stable. So the dynamical system had two equilibria. One, negative two, is unstable, and the other equilibrium, which had the value one, is stable. For our third example, let's write the dynamical system in difference form. Writing it as pt plus one minus p sub t, the change in the state variable p, Let's make it equal to negative 0 0.5 times p sub t times 1 minus p sub t times 3 minus p sub t. So now we have a cubic dynamical system. But because I've written it in this difference form, it'll be easy to find the equilibria. The left-hand side will just get 0 because it's e minus e and the right-hand side is already factored for us. So we get zero equals negative 0.5 e times one minus e times three minus e, which means the equilibria are e equals zero from this term. One minus e equals zero well, that's just e equals one. Three minus e equals zero. Well, that's e equals three. So we have three equilibria, zero, one, and three. Let's check the stability of these equilibria. To do so though, we need to write the dynamical system in function iteration form. We should make it p sub t plus one equals a function f of p sub t. To write this dynamical system in function iteration form, we need to add p sub t to both sides so that p sub t plus one is p sub t minus what we had before, 0 0.5 p sub t, one minus p sub t, three minus p sub t. In other words, f of p is the function p minus 0 0.5 p times one minus p times three minus p. We need to calculate the derivative, f prime of p. We could do this by using the product rule a bunch of times. It's actually not so hard. Or we could just multiply out the polynomial and take the derivative afterward. If you multiply this out and simplify it, you'll get that f is negative 0 0.5 times p cubed plus two p squared minus a half times p. This is the function that we need to take the derivative of and evaluate at the equilibria. Now that we wrote f in this way, it's easy to take its derivative. First, we need to differentiate the cubic and we get one half times three, which is one and a half, times p squared. Differentiate the quadratic, we get two times two, or four, times p, minus 0 0.5. Now let's evaluate this derivative at the three equilibria. If e equals zero, f prime of e is f prime of zero, which is zero plus zero, minus a half. So f prime of zero, its absolute value is 0 0.5, which is less than one. So e equals zero is stable. Next, we'll try e equals one. f prime of one is negative one and a half plus four minus 0 0.5 which is two. 
of the absolute value of f prime of 1, which is 2, is greater than 1, so e equals 1 is unstable. Lastly, for e equals 3, f prime of 3 equals negative 1.5 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3 minus a half. And if you work that all out, you'll get that it's equal to negative 2. So f prime of 3, if we take absolute value, just 2 is greater than 1. So E equals 3, the equilibrium at 3 is again unstable. So this cubic dynamical system had three equilibria, 0, 1, and 3. Only the equilibrium at 0 is stable. The other two equilibria are unstable.